Hello everyone, this is a very paranoid Hexable speaking. Is it deja vu? Is the Matrix screwing with my head again? Am I invading the low countries for the second time in a month? That's right everyone, this is my first video covering the new Panzerkuh DLC Axis Operations 1940. This one is heftier than the two DLCs before it, with 19 missions covering battles in Norway, the Low Countries, France, the Balkans, and if you've been very naughty, the invasion of England. As you can see, the choice of theatres is somewhat less controversial than in 1939, but I do like the fact that they they didn't fixate on France like they did in 1940 campaign in Panzer Corps 1. And speaking of impressions, I haven't yet completed the entire DLC and my conclusions will come as usual in the last video of this little series, but I already can comfortably say that all of the things that we've loved in Panzer Corps 2 DLCs such as diverse theatres, missions, lesser known battles, unusual environments and a good challenge if you're looking for one are still there. My opinion might change later, but so far it looks like the quality is very much there. Now let's look at the order of business for today. I'm covering the first six missions of the DLC and the first fork that it presents to the player. Do you go to Belgium or do you go to the Netherlands? Yes, it's not just the nebulous low countries now. And my answer is, if you're looking for an easier time, go Dutch. The spectacular airborne landing there is very much a set piece affair and it won't take you long to figure it out. Belgium is a completely different story what with the need to cross a heavily fortified defensive line and then defending against a huge armoured formation the French sent. In any case I've thoroughly enjoyed both of these branches so if you choose one make sure you return to the other one and check it out. And as a last thing before we get to the doodles I have to point out that I'm playing this DLC with an experienced imported core and field marshal difficulty. 1940 should be playable standalone, it seems like it is, but I'll test that for the future videos. And now, a boating trip to Norway. Fornebu is the DLC's first mission and the only mission that takes place in Norway as you're trying to mop up a semi-failed landing near Oslo. First up, get used to having many paratrooper units in your call force. Three should be enough to cover your defenses in Fornebu. Just send the gliders immediately towards that area, there will be no one to intercept them. I mean except for the two fighters just north of your positions, but they're very easy to dispatch. Another two paratroopers should go to that little island next to the trapped Blucher heavy cruiser. Destroying the bunker there will yield you a secret unit, Vorfram and Forsi, way before it becomes normally available. Your main force with tanks, artillery and a little bit of infantry should steadily advance north, there won't be too much resistance. However, the Norwegians can cause you trouble in Fornebu with infantry and armoured counterattacks, so taking the airfields in the south and then being able to transfer your planes to Fornebu and support it is a very good idea and so is getting a few BF-110s, they're still very powerful and they are capable of scaring off the enemy tanks. Otherwise, 14 turns is more than enough to wipe all enemy forces off this map. Just remember that for unclear reasons, destroying the bunker at the top left corner of the map will trigger the end of the mission. So if you want to pick up those unprotected flags in Oslo, make sure you do it first. Welcome to an undisclosed location in former Czechoslovakia. I mean, it says Prague on the map. But anyway, this is one of two training missions introduced in this DLC. You are not required to take the mission, even though I don't know why you shouldn't, because it's free experience for your troops and very little opposition. And you should pretty much follow the briefing. The mission is an absolute no-brainer. But there are a couple of things you can do to maximize the experience you get. One, if you have an imported core and many leaders, make sure you beef up your paratroopers with them. Double attack, attack speed multipliers, 
damage bonuses will all maximize the amount of damage you deal and therefore the experience you get. I also recommend not giving in to the temptation of getting bombers for this mission and instead converting your tactical bomber units to recons and then just letting them hang over the target dummies. This way they'll let your infantry inflict more damage and get more experience while building up experience themselves because of the recon bonus. You will be able to convert these recons back to bombers later. After the training in Czechoslovakia, you finally get the option of going either to Belgium or the Netherlands, and this obviously is the Netherlands part with Falkenburg Raid. And let me tell you right off the bat, listen to the briefing and don't stage a normal land operation. The Dutch have lots of troops, a considerable amount of artillery, well-defended positions, and they're not passive, they'll move their troops and try to counterattack you. It will be very difficult to take all of the objectives in time and why should you when you've got this brilliant promising airborne operation laid in front of you so get as many paratrooper units as you want bring a buttload of bombers in for support fighters not necessary in this mission the dutch will not have any units in the air your first target will be the fourth airfield from the top of the map it's virtually unprotected and you will be able to take it on turn one and transfer as many Stukas there as you can. The gliders with your infantry must advance towards Decoy, and once you take the supply hex there and the airfield itself, make sure you leave one unit covering the hex right in front of the bridge leading to Decoy. The Dutch will counterattack there with infantry and artillery and will cause you a lot of trouble if unopposed. Capturing Decoy will also give you a bonus in the form of Fokker fighters. They're not particularly great compared to BF-109s, but for fighters that only occupy two cool slots, they might be an interesting option. Once your business in decor is over, get those paratroopers back into gliders and send them straight to Falkenburg airfield. The Hague will not be well protected and securing that supply hex shouldn't be a problem. On the other hand, I strongly recommend not going to Amsterdam because it's really well protected by strong troops. As for the enemy air force, destruction of objective, take your time and just send your Stukas to those airfields whenever you can. They're not covered by anti-air guns and there's really no rush to destroy them. Battle of the Hrebeberg offers a little bit of a change of peace compared to the previous mission, and while you probably can actively use paratroopers in this mission, you really don't have to and it's pretty much a normal land-based operation. But look on the bright side, we can finally get our armored train into battle. The Dutch will also have a few planes, so make sure you have something to handle them. So your main thrust should be along the railway in the direction of Renen, then pivoting towards Hill 14. Seen, sending a few infantry units and an artillery to the north of the river will yield you a bunch of prestige from all the flags in the north and will also be a good place to attack Amersfoort from. At some point, the anti-air guns on Hill 14 will simply prevent your planes from being useful in the south and transferring them to support you in the north will help get that infantry group right to the gates of Amersfoort. The road south of Hill 14 is not very well covered by the enemy and you can pretty much rush towards Utrecht, just beware of counterattacks. There will be a couple of infantry units and a strong AA units and it will not wait to destroy some of your tanks in the process. The Utrecht objective hex is also protected by a strength 20 fort, so make sure you have those Stukas handy and don't forget to take Utrecht before you take Amersfoort. Eben MAL is the first mission you get if you choose 
Belgium after Czechoslovakia. The briefing very well tells you everything you need to do about Eben MIL, so just block it with your paratroopers. But remember that for as long as they're surrounded, the troops inside Eben MIL are inactive and you can comfortably attack them with your paratroopers. The airfield northwest of Eben MIL will be a good choice for your main airbase in this mission. So, what should your troops in the east do? Their main purpose is obviously taking Liège and Maastricht, and Liège should be your first priority because there will be counterattacks trying to get rid of your paratroopers from the south, including some very strong units, and they will certainly need some support. Only a token force, one or two tanks and artillery unit will be necessary in Maastricht, and once you clear Eben MIL, you'll be able to send some of the paratroopers to help in Maastricht. However, your main push and your best tanks should be directed towards Liège. Just make sure you don't attack or come any close to those defensive lines because they've got crap loads of artillery and artillery bunkers and there's simply no point in engaging them. Anu is the last mission of a little romp in Belgium, and this is the first mission where your tanks can get a good thrashing if you're not careful, even if you've got those horrifying KV-2s in Denmark. As soon as you take Hanu, the French will throw crap loads of tanks and cavalry at you. Most of those tanks will be on par with yours and will have a few stars of experience. So trying to win an open battle against them is simply suicidal. The briefing suggests plopping AT guns everywhere, but given that German AT units at this point are crap, you will do much better bringing lots of heavy artillery with AT capability. An 8.8cm flak gun would be a very good idea because the French will throw quite a lot of planes against you, and the hill northeast of Hanu will provide the AA gun with sufficient range to cover all of your troops. I also recommend taking and hosing the airfield north of Hanu, as it provides your planes with better access to the battlefield. Once you grind through the armored wave counterattacking at Hanu, direct your attention to We. Your best approach there is concentrating as much artillery as you can and blasting the defending infantry into oblivion. In any case, make sure you keep Hanu covered because there will be a few stray enemy units roaming about in the west of the map and they might just stumble on your cities or your flags. In this mission, you will also be offered to spend four commendation points on a lesser-known multi-turret German tank, the Neubaufahrzeug. It has rather the measly armor, but a very good punch on the attack, what with the good stats and the 1.5 fire speed trait. One last point, if you've been covering my Panzer Corps 2 mission overviews so far, you know that I usually play with the Race Against Time Special Challenge, which reduces your turn limit by 5. I have switched it off for this DLC because it's still kinda glitchy, sometimes prevents missions from ending. Plus, missions like the Undisclosed Location in Czechoslovakia don't really work with it, because with the reduced number of turns, you only have two in Czechoslovakia, making it an exercise size and futility. However, unofficially, I still follow the minus five turns rule, and unless I expressly say otherwise, you can comfortably assume that I have completed the missions I'm talking about, well, with that restriction. This is it for now. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, because next time we will go fox hunting in the Ardennes.